Happy New Year. 2019 was a wild ride. 2020 doesn't look to be much different. Yesterday, I released Jackrabbit TV. That is a special and specific version of Jackrabbit that runs on the TradingView platform. In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between the Crypto Hopper version of Jackrabbit and the TradingView version of Jackrabbit. Let's start with by saying that the Crypto Hopper version is not obsolete. While the TradingView version is a significant and more robust upgrade, it is not necessarily suitable for the Explorer subscription on CryptoHopper. In fact, in order to even run TradingView signals on CryptoHopper, you need to have an Adventure subscription. TradingView signals will not work on the Explorer subscription. So bear that in mind when you're looking at various options. I have said before that you should have $1,000 per coin or equivalent. 1,000 UST, USDT, or 1,000 USDC. The TradingView variant, or Jackrabbit TV, that does change some. While it's still recommended you have $1,000 per coin, the TradingView Jackrabbit does allow you to run reasonably comfortable at $100 per coin. I actually have two different bots doing just that. I have one on Crypto Hopper running the Adventure subscription, and I have one on the Binance Trader that Three Commas offers. The Binance Trader is an advantage because I only have to pay for trading fees or the exchange fees, which of course are 0.1% per buy or sell, or 0.2% per complete transaction. There are no other fees to it, so it's an interesting offer where I can run smaller budgets. Now, Jackrabbit TV is a premium script. It's subscription only. That subscription is $25 a month, and that includes support from me. I provide a lot of it, including one-on-one -on -one working with individual subscribers. All that is done through the Patreon account, and of course I will put the links in the description below. There is a special Jackrabbit tier on the Patreon account specifically for that where I release information strictly to and for Jackrabbit TV subscribers. So if you're looking to get into Jackrabbit TV, be sure to read the information about it. Make sure your risk assessments and your budgets are appropriate because simply put, you still have to break even at the end of the month, and $25 may not be within your price budget depending upon your circumstances. I personally believe you'll make it up easily as it's less than a dollar a day to break even. So if you have a reasonable budget of $500, five good coins could very easily give you what you need to break even. But you must make sure you understand your risk assessment and you must make sure you take time and patience to evaluate each coin specifically. Jackrabbit TV is like Jackrabbit in respects that it uses a moving average, RSI, stochastic, Bollinger Bands, and Williams Percent R. Jackrabbit TV adds an additional layer for risk mitigation. That's pretty much where the similarities end. Where Crypto Hopper's version of Jackrabbit only used five indicators. The same basic five indicators on Jackrabbit TV had been expanded to layers. 
So each indicator has a myriad of layers. All together, all five indicators represent about 40 layers of analysis. The risk mitigation layer, or filter as it really should be considered, actually doubles that. So when you're using the risk mitigation, you're going through about 80 different layers of analysis to get a buy or a sell. While no strategy is 100% perfect or profitable, it drastically reduces the amount of bad positions. With Jackrabbit TV, I took an entirely different approach to the market. And that is very simple. Good assets will always represent good selling positions. So you don't need to focus on when you sell the asset. You need to focus on when you buy the asset to buy it at only the best opportunities. That is a significant change from the crypto hopper paradigm where buying and selling are more mechanical. The jackrabbit algorithms are more surgical in the approach that they take. Now you can turn off the risk mitigation engine and it will perform according to the original layers of Jackrabbit. Meaning you just have the moving average RSI stochastic Williams percent R and Bollinger Bands crossovers. However you still have to go through the minimum 40 layers that they represent within Jackrabbit TV. So it's still a significant upgrade from the original. And it does require at least one alert per each coin. Now if you wish to buy and sell, you will need two alerts. Typically I use a standard trailing stop loss with my two alerts one buy, one sell, and I have a stop loss of, or not stop loss, a trailing stop loss of 0.3% arm and a retracement of 0.03%. I find that works well for me as I can get in and out of the coins quickly and not have to worry about them. I don't use a stop loss. Instead, I use a slightly different tactic, and it's higher risk, but it seems to be more favorable for a lot of the coins. And that is, I use dollar cost averaging. So as soon as the coin drops for below 1% for one hour or more, I do an immediate dollar cost averaging for triple down. Now, on the Binance trader that three commas offers I do a dollar cost averaging for single positions at the one percent mark for example in crypto hopper uses a triple down so if your position is ten dollars and you do a dollar cost averaging on crypto hopper your position becomes thirty dollars it works out well and it helps make crypto hopper a little more responsive to the market with the Binance Trader, three commas, I use a single DCA. The DCA I use is equal to my position size and I do 10 layers. So, if my original position is $10, I go down 1% underwater I DCA at $10 on the Binance Trader. So then my position becomes 20%. If it drops again, my position becomes $30. Excuse me, not percent, dollars. That's different approach than Crypto Hopper. Is it better? I don't know. I think that's kind of questionable. It's not as adventurous. Both methods carry their own risks 
and rewards and must be evaluated appropriately based upon your risk assessment. I don't know if one is better than the other. Are they both effective? Yes, they are. Are they better than a stop loss? That's questionable and debatable at best. A stop loss takes you out of the game right then and there. So if it continues to drop, you're not putting more money into it. That being said, if it rebounds, as most crypto coins do, you're out of the game. You don't get your profit. So it really, you have to weigh out the options to both of them carefully. Most importantly, though, the decisions you make start with the coins themselves. Whether you have a stop loss or whether you dollar cost average or manually merge or sell by hand, it doesn't matter if you don't make the right coin choices. That is the beginning and the end of everything. Generally speaking, I use high level market cap, high trade volume coins. I try to find coins of at least 500,000 or more market cap. Some coins are worth taking a chance on, but most of them aren't. Bitcoin is a rocky road, and whether or not it's something you want to trade, that really depends upon your risk assessment. It can be a good, and it can be horribly bad. The market swings on it are just insane. So it's something you want to be aware of when you pick Bitcoin as a coin to work with. Also, if you pick Bitcoin, you need to be pay, you need to pay attention to Ether. Most coins tend to follow Bitcoin dominance fairly closely. Ether is almost a direct mirror. So if Bitcoin goes down, Ether goes down, and you end up with a double loss in most cases. So it is really difficult to choose one or both of those unless you have a very solid strategy and risk assessment plan in place to help these two coins function together. It's by no means easy, and it's not scientific by a long shot. You need to really understand your risk assessments and your budgets. If you want to play with both Bitcoin and Ether at the same time, be prepared to have a higher than normal budget. Both of those coins, I would say the $1,000 general idea is pretty much the same even with Jackrabbit TV, just because they are so volatile and such huge swings in prices. You can do it unless, but I don't know how effective that's going to be. That's something that's going to require a lot of analysis. And that's something you should always do with any and every coin you investigate. Always run a paper trader. Always analyze, always back test, and always cross examine every single result. So as I said previously, some coins are just not worth dealing with unless you have the market for it. One coin comes to mind that is difficult at best. It's Raven. Raven is a good coin. It brings in some really nice profits. But that coin has a nasty underside to it. I've gotten as much as 4, 5, and 8% profits off of Raven. But I've had to put down $11,000 or more. Right now i got one position that's about $13,000. And that started at a $10 position that's been DCA just to bail it out. So you really need to focus heavily on your coins. Another coin that's problematic is XLM, Stellar. 
good coin, does well, gives nice profits. But back testing it shows that it can take up to $80,000 to bail it out when it starts going down hard. Not every coin is good, and sometimes less is more, and those two probably fall in that category for a lot of people. When you think about your strategy with Jackrabbit TV, think about the worst case scenario. And this is really where I get my $1,000 per coin paradigm. If you take a DCA of five layers, a $10 position is going to cost you $2,000 four hundred and thirty dollars that is for example the first three ten thirty ninety that's how crypto hopper does its dca when you triple down now if you're on binance trader it's a little bit less meaning you can actually stipulate how you want your dca to happen that is nice because then you can just do a single down and you can just spend a hundred dollars on ten drops is it as fast of a recovery no is it as an effective of a recovery yes and no so again testing and analysis are important don't take shortcuts shortcuts equal losses moving forward if you do subscribe to Jackrabbit TV, be aware that you will need to have at least a pro subscription on TradingView. That does add to your costs for breaking even. The minimum costs on TradingView are $15 per month. Jackrabbit is $25 per month, so you need to think about that as well. $35 per month total between the two of them. So I would say, reasonably speaking, if you want to deal with 10 coins, $1,000 is still very plausible and very doable. The market is the market. It goes up, it goes down. What are you going to do about it? It is what it is. Can you make money on it? Absolutely. Are you going to lose money on it? Guaranteed. Plan. Take your time. Be patient. And most importantly, know what to expect. Those are probably the best tips I can give anybody wanting to evaluate Jackrabbit TV. If you're not sure about it, start out with the Binance Trader and go down from there. When you start with the Binance Trader, you're only paying for exchange fees. From them. If you start with just a one single buy signal from the free version of TradingView, that at least gets you in the game with Jackrabbit TV for just a $25 a month subscription. Depending upon how much you invest in each position, it's still doable. It needs to be a little bit more strategic, but you can do it. So you can find ways of working with limited funds and still doing well on it. How limited? It really depends upon how much time you want to spend watching over and nurturing your investments. No investment is set it and forget it. You do that, you're going to lose everything. Investing is a garden. You plant your plants, you weed them, you keep the bugs off them, you water them, you keep them covered when it's hailing out, so forth. You take care of them vigorously because they're going to feed you come harvest time. Your crypto investments are pretty much the same way. You need to watch after them, nurture them, and take care of them. Some strategies, like Jackrabbit TV, make things a little easier with the risk mitigation. But you still have to pay attention to the details. 
those details begin and end with your budget. Like any strategy on the market, Jackrabbit TV does not know how much money you have and it does not know how much you can spend. It also doesn't know what your positions are. All it knows is the raw, cold, cruel mathematics of the algorithm. It's up to you to fill in the blanks. Whether it's Crypto Hopper's template that manages those aspects, three commas, uh, Binance trading bots, or any of the other platforms out there that support trading these signals, you have to make sure you take the details necessary to help your own risk mitigation framework. There's only so much Jackrabbit TV can do to protect you from the real world. It can't think for you. It can't evaluate your own risks. You have to do that. You have to know exactly what you have to work with. Machines are machines and they often go wrong or simply break. That's the same with any mathematical algorithm. While it does not follow social constructs and does not trade socially, Still, it's a level of mathematics, and if the market shows extreme unusual activity, it reacts to that unusual activity. That's something you need to be aware of, and that's something that only through careful analysis will you discover it. Again, I emphasize, take your time in setting this up. Be patient and be careful. Realistically, and this really applies to any strategy, your first two or three months are going to be a loss just because of testing and analysis. Add that to your trader's journal so you know how much money you have to make up at the end of the day to finally break even. But you need to be aware of those reasons, those losses, those profits, whatever it takes. Don't expect software to do what you should be doing. Managing and mitigating your own risks. This is not a financial advisor that goes through every little nook and cranny of your personal finances. Nobody looks after your finances best but you. Because nobody else knows your finances best but you. When you set up Jackrabbit TV for Crypto Hopper, the Binance template that I provide free in the marketplace is a reasonable starting place. Go through it, inspect it, check it, test it. For most people, you'll probably want to turn off the dollar cost averaging to begin with, just because it does mean high risk. For setting up Jackrabbit TV on the three commas Binance Trader, that's a pretty simple and straightforward process. You basically just pick the single coin for the bot. You will need a composite bot if you want dollar cost averaging. That way, every time a buy signal comes in, it adds to the existing position. It's a very easy process once you get past three commas techno babble. You can tell this was written by programmers and it's very steep in jargon. But once you get past that it really is a pretty straightforward and easy platform to use. It's not as exciting as Crypto Hopper or as flashy but it works and it works well. The fact that the Binance Trader is free and you only pay exchange fees is just a plus. So, when you working with either of these platforms, or Apex, that's another platform you can use. I haven't tested Apex that much yet, but I do know people that use it and it works well as also. 
concentrate most importantly on the top five or ten coins of the market. Whether you use coin market cap or just look at your exchange's order books, focus on that aspect of trading. Those are going to be the best indicators on what Jackrabbit TV is going to be able to trade efficiently. Do your research. Be diligent in your research. And whatever you do, until you're very familiar with Jackrabbit TV, do not, under any circumstances, turn off the risk mitigation engine. It is there to protect you from the market. Use it. I don't recommend anyone except the most advanced traders operate without some kind of risk mitigation framework. And that engine is probably the best approach I've seen on the market. 80 layers of analysis is a huge benefit to you. Take advantage of it. For every single coin you evaluate, take advantage of that analysis. That will be your best way of not losing your money and, in fact, making a real profit. Well, I've probably rattled enough by now, so until next time.